Hey gang, it's JC and this is your Daily Dose for Tuesday, June 8th, 2010. A cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. We're doing the show today in front of the garden. You know, I never got into gardening until about 10 years ago and then it was like, this is fabulous. Nothing tastes better than a tomato that you have grown in your own garden. It's also fun, I think it's also therapeutic working in the garden. We've got some uh, eggplant grown in here, some tomatoes, some basil. It's just fabulous stuff. Anyhow. I was driving back from a ball game last night about uh, 11 o'clock. We won 4-1, to by the way. I scored two runs. And uh, I'm driving along. I'm thinking to myself, wow, there's people going to bed right now. Got to get up early in the morning and go to work. And it just hit me. <laughs> I don't have to. <laughs> Been off the air for seven months now. They keep paying me. It looks like they're going to keep paying me through March of next year when the contract expires. You tell me. Uh, anyhow, we have some new features here, including if you look right there, you will see that you can subscribe to us on iTunes. You can hear the audio from the Daily Dose. And, of course, the menu bar up at the top of the page has all the archives, and you can punch around whenever you choose. Right, let's go to the news. The VH1 Hip Hop Awards were aired last night. There were no survivors. All right, MTV, by the way, issuing an apology for all the F-bombs that got dropped in the broadcast for the movie awards on Sunday night. They have a delay, but apparently the poor guy whose job it was to bleep everything, he's in a state hospital today, <laughs> just with a nervous condition. There was some conservative watchdog group counted 100 naughty words in two hours. If you take out the commercials, that comes out to be about one a minute. It's about right for rock stars when you say. So let's see, it was 47 F words, 11 S words, two A holes, one tits, and nine unidentifiable. That's my favorite. All right, we have some new stats. When older couples get divorced, and by the way, that's happening a lot more. As a matter of fact, between 1997 and 07, the number of couples over the age of 60 getting divorces shot up by 50%. And when these couples break up over the age of 60, 70% 70 of the time the split is initiated by the woman. They apparently want to become more independent. It helps when they have 50% of your stuff. Have a nice day. All right, we were talking about this a couple of days now. We finally have time for it. The 10 signs that you're out of touch with technology. Now, they introduced the new iPhone yesterday, and that's fabulous for somebody like me who just bought one a couple of months ago thinking, well, this is going to be it for a while. And then they have like a hundred new things on this phone and it's thinner and everything like that. Here are the 10 signs that you're out of touch with technology. Do you still surf the web? No, you don't, dummy. You Google it. Surf the web is passe. Number nine, you live in North Korea. Well, they've got a closed sort of shut down internet there. They get their own version of it. Then again, if you live in North Korea, probably the internet is the least of your problems. Number eight, you still have a VCR. Well, I don't know about you, I need one because half the stuff that we're running on, the eye candy and the video village and all sorts of things, that's all from old VCR tapes. Number seven, you still have a landline. We just got rid of ours last month here at the Corcoran Palatial Mansion. Uh, number six, you got a flip phone, get rid of it. It's 2010. Number five, you still use a desktop computer. Everything is about mobility now. Why would you want to be chained down with a desktop computer? Number four, you don't use wireless internet. Again, mobility. Number three on the list of uh, the 10 things that show you're out of touch with technology. You still listen to CDs. All right, CDs do sound better than MP3s, but again, this is where the technology is right now. Number two, you don't use a TiVo or a DVR. You don't have a DVR? Come on. By the way, what a great change in technology as far as having kids because you know back when i had kids 15 16 years ago little babies like honey i need you right away and you go run in the room and there's poop flying around all over the room and then you come back and even you had a, a vcr you had to decide well i missed something do i stop the recording it's just a met well now you just hit the pause button and you're in business and number one you still have an aol email address somebody emailed me they have a hotmail address all right, I love this guy, Brian McCrary of Gray, Tennessee. A little place called Bluff City there in Tennessee, and he gets a $90 speeding ticket, and he's pissed. So he gets on the Bluff City Police Department, and he realizes that their domain name has expired. So he buys it for $10, and you guessed it, he's putting up all sorts of stuff. People go to that website thinking it's the police department, and know it's him putting up all this obnoxious stuff, and they can't get it back from him because he owns it now. Duh! 
That's a great get even story. All right, uh, let's move on to Celebrity Tuesday. We do this every Tuesday, and I focus on somebody, some sort of celebrity that I met and actually got to know and spent some time with. And today we're going to talk about Don Henley. Of course, the Eagles are coming into Bush Stadium in a couple of weeks, and I've already told you why I'm not going, not into all this country crap. And there was a time when Don Henley seemed to be holding the moral compass for the entire music industry, which was interesting because he had been embroiled in some controversies and scandals, and he'd been on probation for a couple of years involving an underage girl and stuff like that. This is an intelligent guy. This is a smart guy. Of course, uh, you're probably familiar with his uh, efforts to try to save parts of Walden Woods, Henry David Thoreau, that sort of stuff. So I met up with him on the Building of the Perfect Beast Tour, and again, this is a fascinating story because this guy had been in a band his entire life, and the Eagles split up, went on hiatus, whatever you want to call it. And now uh, the Fox Theater show in 1985 was the first time he had ever set foot on a stage as a solo act. He told me he was scared to death. And he had had a gun belt uh, across his chest. It said the thing weighed like 40 pounds. He only, wore, he only wore it one night and then got rid of it. So if you saw that show, you saw the only time he wore that whole thing. Now, we spent a lot more time together during Grammy Week in Los Angeles in 1989. And he became part of Music in Action, which was uh, an organization involving a lot of musicians, including Dee Snyder, Twisted Sister, Frank Zappa, Don Henley, a lot of people like that who were fighting off Tipper Gore and the PMRC. Anybody remember the Parents Music Resource Center running around sticking warning labels on everything? Well, this was a smart, calculating, some would say guarded individual. He sized you up very, very quickly. And he was very intent on making his points and not some sort of dancing monkey. Uh, he was wound a little tightly. I should also say very handsome guy. He knew about the whole party town phenomenon here in St. Louis. Apparently he had been getting royalty checks and wondering what the hell was going on. He and Glenn Fry were both aware of what we were doing with Party Town. Um, shortly after all of this, Don Henley put on an album, and on the cover, he had his hair all combed over and hanging to one side. He looked like he was a reject from a flock of seagulls, and I think that's when Don Henley started to lose his way. Now you got that whole country music thing, and the Dixie Chicks, and Walmart. And it's just another uh, sort of cautionary tale. you got to be careful who you idolize in show business because more times than not, they end up disappointing you. Anyhow, that's Celebrity Tuesday. Let's move on to birthdays. Prince turned 52 yesterday. You know, you go to his shows, he doesn't do Little Red Corvette anymore. He does a song called Big Gray Buick. <laughs> All right. We have new stuff on the Video Village right now going back to the late 80s when radio stations had money to give away, oh, I don't know, 200 trips to Hawaii like we did back then. And the TV commercial is pretty funny, so we put that up for you on the Video Village. On the Wayback Machine, the date is May 2nd, 1997, and it was St. Louis night at the Late Show with David Letterman. All 500 people in the crowd were from St. Louis, and the monologue was tailored to St. Louis, and we have that for you on the Wayback Machine. Not necessarily the news involves Governor Nixon. JC's eye candy today is an extreme close-up of Mark McGuire's wrist. And you'll have to look at it to figure out why I put that up there. All right, tomorrow we're going to do something about uh, this thing called Wife Abandonment Syndrome. Also, American phrases that the British people hate most. And also, you're not going to believe what women really think of short men. All right, so that's it. We will see you tomorrow. That's the Daily Dose for, I've forgotten the date. Tuesday, June 8th, 2010, a cooperative venture of mind active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. And in the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.